You know, there are some folks out there that think that you should be reasonable about how you remove your snow. Like only use your snow blower if you have four inches or more of snow. So I'm curious, is there some list of rules to follow about when it's okay to use a snow blower and when we have to use a shovel? Well, I'm glad you asked because in fact, I found a list of five rules recently that somebody posted. And if you don't fit into one of these five categories, you should not be using a snow blower. Did you know that? So let's dissect that list today, see if we agree with this guy or not, and have a little fun with it. But one thing's for sure is that if you have a tippy tractor, wheel spacers can make a big difference. We are proud to be sponsored by Boro Wheel Spacers. They are made in America and have a lifetime warranty. So if you're feeling a little tippy side to side, have a cab, a high center of gravity, wheel spacers, widening those rear wheels can make a big difference in stability. So check them out, link down below. All right, now before we get to that list, there was a comment recently on a snow removal video that I did from Michael McCotter. And he's got a little bit different take on when he uses a snowblower. Now Michael says he has a third of a mile road, single lane, that's not maintained by anybody but him. He says it takes a plow or a pusher four hours to clear his driveway in a major snow event. He's not able to get the snow moved efficiently where it can get off the road. Instead, Michael uses a 28 inch walk behind snowblower to take care of his third of a mile long driveway. Now as a point of reference, the driveway we put out at our new property is about a third of a mile long. I can't imagine using a walk behind snowblower to clear that. Has anybody done anything like that? That seems like a crazy long driveway to tackle with a small, barely over two foot wide walk behind snowblower. To me, that's a glutton for punishment. Hey, so we're not the only guys around here that like snowblowers. In fact, we're gonna sprinkle in some snowblowing videos from a lot of our favorite YouTube channels. We'll post links to their channels down below as well, but I'd encourage you to check them out and see what they have to say about their snowblowers. All right, so Kevin Kinkeed from The Crossing Board posts this article, all right? And we're gonna dissect this a little bit more, but he says, just because you can use a machine to do something, should you actually use it? And he says, no. What's that about? He says there is such a thing as overkill. I would disagree. He says crazy things like, you wouldn't use an F-350 to commute to work. Apparently, he hasn't seen my truck. He says he wouldn't use a chainsaw to trim your hedges. Apparently, he hasn't seen these videos on YouTube. So let that shape your perspective about the kind of guy we're talking about here when he's saying a snowblower shouldn't be used. All right, so now for snowblower rule number one. If you can shovel your drive in 15 minutes or less, just use the shovel. Now for me, there's no minimal amount of snow that could be had to shovel my driveway in 15 minutes or less. This is not a big driveway. This is a residential neighborhood that we live in, but even a trace amount of snow would take just the sheer time of walking back and forth way longer than 15 minutes to do. Now, all that said, if I had such a trace amount of snow, just an inch or two of snow, I wouldn't bother clearing it anyways, unless I was just itching to get out there on my tractor. I guess his thought is that by the time you gas it up, make sure everything's working like it should, get it warmed up and out in the driveway and working, you'd already be 25% done with a shovel. However, if you can shovel your driveway in 15 minutes, then you probably only need to refuel once, maybe twice a winter, so what's the big deal? Okay, so rule number two, you need to have at least six inches of snow in order to use your snow blower. All right, so I sort of agree with this one, but not for the reasons that he's stating. This is mainly because if you only have two, three inches of snow, it can be challenging to have enough snow accumulate to push it properly through the chute. However, if I have my tractor or even a walk behind snowblower all set up to use for the winter time, I'm gonna use it at every opportunity I possibly can. So if it's not quite enough snow out there for the blower, 
I'm just going to use the pusher on front or maybe you have a plow blade or a bucket or a rear scraper blade, something else. But if you had the machine at your disposal to do the work, then what's the point of doing it by hand? Is it just to prove you're a man? Hey, if you enjoy tractor videos, I'd encourage you to hit that subscribe button down below and follow along. We have more than 450 videos all about tractors, projects, attachments, you name it. We'd love to have you join along. And if you are in the market for a tractor attachment, check out our website, goodworkstractors.com. We sell and ship all over the country. Okay, rule number three, if you can be the neighborhood snowblower guy, it's a noble and helpful position to hold. Well, this I do tend to agree with, and I think a lot of tractor owners agree, because if you have the equipment, whether that's a walk behind or a tractor with a snowblower, snowplow, whatever you have, oftentimes you can knock out your own driveway so quick that you don't want the fun to be over with. So you go looking for other ways to help. If you can help a neighbor out, it's a fun way to do that. They feel good, you feel good. It's a win-win situation. Okay, rule number four is getting really arbitrary, which is if your driveway is 30 yards or longer, well, then it's okay to use a snowblower. Well, thankfully, I did some measurements and my driveway is over 30 yards or over 90 feet. But man, I thought I could get close there. I thought I may come in at 29 yards and that would be totally unacceptable. But what about those days when it's single digits or even colder or the wind is gusting and blowing all over the place, the wind chill is just giving you frostbite instantaneously? Who wants to be out there with a shovel tackle in their driveway? You wanna go out there, get your job done as fast as you possibly can, and get on back inside. The same thing can be said if you have to tackle it before work or after work or after the kids practice or whatever it is. So who knows, maybe this guy is just looking for ways to burn his time, he's got nothing else to do. I can think of a lot better ways to use it though. So note number five just happened to make my day. This article, I found it on January 7th, which just happened to be the day that I went over the hill. So note number five is if you are the age of 40 or older, it is okay to use a blower. And so while it may be a small thing, this makes me feel pretty good, you know? I get to use my snow blower whenever I want for any reason, no matter the amount of snowfall, and get away with it. All right, so I don't know if you agree with this list or not. There's a few points I can, I can see make some sense and some that don't, you know, but overall this is just having a little fun. Oftentimes, we're just picking one snow removal tool and it's gotta tackle everything that comes our way. But I did recently come across an article on Green Tractor Talk, or a forum thread, I should say, that says snow, too little to mess with. And this was asking a similar type of question, right? When is it enough snow to go out there and take care of? But there's some other criteria that come into play too. Some guys were looking at the long-term forecast, right? If it's just a couple of inches of snow, the sun's gonna come out, it's gonna warm up, well that snow's just gonna melt away, right? But if it's gonna stay cold, and if there's a couple inches this day, and that day, and the next day, well you wanna stay on top of it, clear it off so it doesn't accumulate, pile up, and create an icy situation. Another gentleman has a very similar situation to what I have out here, which is a really steep driveway, and if that doesn't get cleared off, cleaned off on a regular basis, it turns into just a slippery slope, I've crashed and burned on there. Cars slide out of control off the driveway. It's just a dangerous, scary situation. And even if it's just an inch, we gotta get out there and clear it off before it gets back down. Now, one of my favorite responses in that thread though, and I can relate to this 100% is, it depends on whether it's the beginning of the season or the end. And I can agree with that wholeheartedly. You know, when you get your snow plow, your snow removal set up in the fall, you're just waiting. You're just checking the forecast constantly to see when the snow is gonna be coming so you can take care of it. It's just a blast, all that excitement. But as the winter drags on, I'm less and less excited. I wanna see less snow in the forecast. I wanna see warmer temps coming sooner and sooner. So I can totally relate to that one. All right, so I'm curious, what do you guys think? Do you have your own unwritten snowblower rules on when it's okay and not okay? Is there such a thing as overkill? I have used some large equipment on my driveway. I don't care, more power, baby. So join the conversation by leaving a comment down below. And if you did enjoy today's video, you wanna see more, we'd love to have you subscribe. Hit that subscribe button. And guess what? If you own a tractor, you're probably gonna be in the market at some point for a tractor attachment. You gotta check out our website, goodworkstractors.com. We sell and ship tractor attachments all over the country every day. So I wanna thank you for taking time out of your day to stop by. And until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon.